So Exxon sequencing workflow. Just because if you go and talk to a vendor about how long should this process take, well, you know, we'll walk through a, uh, an example here of kind of an average uh, case scenario. Of course, sample input, the batch size, um, exactly the type of analyses that you want to do. All these kind of configurable entities change these time frames. But assuming you have uh, tissue, in tissue input, and I have here blood, you know, tumor, uh, FFPE, whole tumor. Uh, we do primarily a lot of oncology sequencing here, so uh, that's where we have there. Isolation, depending on the input material, can take, you know, around five days to actually get to the genomic DNA you need to start. Uh, from there, you want to fragment that DNA, so that way, you know, when you're sequencing with your chosen technology, the pieces of DNA are small enough to where you can generate meaningful information that actually represents the sequence the exomes are involved in. Um, after that, you're going to enrich those libraries. The red dates here are from the exome enrichment process, so they're actually pulling pieces of the DNA that correspond to those protein coding regions. Um, after you do that, you um, pull the beaded or the baited or the amplified DNA out of the solution. You see here in the red, everything's attracted to the magnet, um, and then the other non-exome material falls away in the eluent. Uh, that whole process can take around five days, again, depending on capture technology and purification steps. Um, after that, you want to think about uh, uh, actually pooling. You have to quality control the libraries, make sure they're good, make sure you understand what kind of uh, uh, input you have to normalize them to get maximal yield. And from there, you can put it on your sequencer of choice. Uh, sequencing then takes anywhere from 2 to 13 days. Uh, depending on the chemistry, depending on the machine, depending on, you know, how much, how quickly you want your data. From that, analysis uh, happens on either, you know, your desktop boxes, third-party software, customized pipelines, and that's, that's going to be where you're going to get how these sequence reads up here actually start following along the exome or the genome, and you'll see things start stacking in forward and reverse reads. And through interpretation and variant calling, after looking at those stacked reads, you start to identify what are my mutations here, and this is just a toy example of, you know, a reference A, and we have two of the eight reads, uh, i.e. 25 percent, actually showing an alternate allele. So, you know, all in all, this can take this can take a couple weeks.